Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Happy New Year to you all. Um, I'm going to take a look at this puzzle, which was uh, the diabolical rated puzzle from last Friday's uh, Daily Telegraph. Um, we do a lot of these because they are very, very challenging as a rule. Um, and yeah, this one is the live one, if you like. So this is this is uh, the one from last Friday. I've done a few recently that have been uh, viewer requested. Um, yeah, this one's current. Um, so I can see, looking at the one and the one here, we can place the one in this square. So let's do that. And as usual, I'll start with standard notation, by which I mean that if I can identify a place, or uh, two positions that a number can go in any three by three block, like this one, I'll make little pencil marks to remind me of that fact. Now, I'm fully expecting with the diabolical puzzle that towards the end, this notation may not need may not be enough. I'll probably have to extend that at least to notating cells which can only contain exactly two numbers. Um, but we'll start with this and see how far it takes us. Uh, so I can see I can pencil mark some threes here because of the threes in these two positions. Um, similarly threes here look. Nines. So this nine here and this nine here interact on this three by three block and force there to be a nine into this square. So let's put a nine there and pencil mark nines in this three by three block. That's because of this nine here, this nine here, and this nine over there. Um, similarly, I can pencil mark nines there. Look, that's quite an interesting symmetry between the pencil marks for threes and nines in these two corner three by three blocks. Um, I don't know why that is. Now, my, my eyes are drawn to this X shape in this three by three block. Always a powerful pattern because now we need to be looking at the rows and columns for the intersections. So particularly, let's look at three here. You can see that we're able to get pencil mark threes in to those two squares and this six here means I can pencil mark sixes into those two squares. Now I need to try and use these pencil marks. You can see I'm able to on this three by three block now because of the three pencil marks here I'm ruling out a three from this square and this three ruling out threes from either here or here there's only one place left for a three now and that means that because of our earlier pencil marks we can also write in a three at the bottom. Um, now we mustn't, uh, in fact we can also place a three here now because of the three, the three, there's a whole load of threes all around the grid. So that gives us a three up there. And as I, as I was about to say, what I want to do is to make sure that I use the sixes as well that I got penciled in just in case that's going to give me anything. And of course it's not. Uh, rules out a six from this square. Uh, just checking the columns in row 7 to see if there's anything more I can get from that but uh, I guess this square is restricted isn't it because if we compare this is a this is good technique to be honest it's something you should get familiar with uh, if you the more Sudokus you do you should always be looking for situations where there's a big difference between um, the number the given numbers in rows and columns and it, as, as we scan down here we can see in the big numbers are 3, 5, 8 and 9 scan across here the given numbers are 1, 2, 3 and 7 so completely different sets of numbers so I know this square is heavily restricted in fact it's got to be a 4 or a 6 ah, but we have the pencil mark 6s here so this cannot be a 6 and must be a 4 let's put that in um, does that really do anything for me? nothing immediately obvious um, so what are we left to place in this 3x3 three three block? 5s, 6s and 8s. Nah, can't see how to do anything with that just yet. Ah, this 8 here is nice, isn't it? Because that's going to interact on this 3x3 three three block and allow me to pencil mark 8s into those two squares. And then we must use this 8 and these two 8s on this 3x3 three three block, which forces an 8 into one of those two squares. And that means I can pencil mark 8s down there. Um, I'm just going to check the rest of column 8 here. So 1, 2, 6 and 7 to place. No, I can't see how to do that. And I'm going to check. 
going to check column three now. So two, six, seven, eight to place. So that square is a two or a seven. I'm going to notate. Ah, no, better than that. Let's have a look at this column more carefully. I've pencil marked these eights here, but look, we have a six here and a six here. So I can actually go further. There's a six, eight pair at the bottom here. Now that means that these two squares must be two and seven in some order. And is that going to get me anything more? Hmm. Well, it might do later. I've just got to keep track of the fact that these pencil marks aren't, aren't done on the same basis as some of the other pencil marks, but we should be able to keep track of that. Um, so now I'm wondering about this square, because again, I've got, got quite a lot of numbers that are not in this uh, row already, looking at the 6 and the 8. So what do we need here? 5, 6, 8 and 9. So this is a 5 or a 9. Is there any way of eliminating one of those options? Um, I'll just have a look at this for a minute. See so if I can pencil mark fives into those two squares. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something obvious here. Ah, yes, yes, I am missing something obvious. Let's look at this square now. Because of this five here and this five here, there's a five in one of those two squares squares. Now that means this square cannot contain a 5, it must contain a 9. Let's add that in. I can remove the 9 from there. That means that there's a 5 in one of these two squares. And if we have a look along the row now, so we're looking to still place 5, 6 and 8. Ah, well, okay, that has to be a 6. So now we have a 5-8 pair into those two squares there. Let's just check this 6, see whether we can do anything more with it. Ah, well, we can pencil mark 6s into those two squares. 6, 6. Ah, that is useful, isn't it? That unwinds, that unwinds this 6-8 pair, so let's do that. So that's a 6 and that's an 8 which means this is an 8 and this is a 5. 5, 5, which means this is a 5, this is a 5, this is an 8. Which means this is an 8. And all of a sudden we're starting to make reasonable progress again. I can pencil mark some 2s down here, look. And if we now look at these two squares here, these have to be 5 and 6, and you can see there's only one place the 5 can go, so that's 5, that's a 6, this must be a 5, 2, 4, 7 down here, ah, can't do anything with that, and 4, 7, 8, 9 here, so 9's in one of those two positions, 8's in one of us, ah, so this has to be an 8, Okay, so I'm making reasonable progress. Two, four, seven, nine. Ah, so that squares a seven or a nine. I'm going to notate that simply because it might prove useful. And these two squares are four and seven, I think. Now this this should get your spider senses tingling. If we look at the two uh, cells that we found here. They have a common digit, this 7. So there's two things that this makes me think. Uh, firstly, we need to check the rest of the column here in case we can find that one of these squares just contains some subset of the numbers 4, 7, and 9, because that will give us a triple. Um, I think we're not going to be lucky, actually, are we? So that's going to be... Uh, what's that going to be? 2... Four and nine, and this is going to be two, four, and seven. So, no, so we're not lucky with the triples here. But the other thing we need to think about is whether or not there's a Y wing. Now, what's a Y wing? Well, it, I describe them as a bent triple, 
and sometimes they can be powerful as well. So I'm going to check these two squares just to see what the combinations are that can go into them. So we've got 4, 7 and 9. Yes, yeah, so that is a 4, 9. Oh, there you go. Well, there's a wide wing. So we'll have a look at that in a second. I'll just check this number as well. Uh, no, that can be anything. So that's less likely to be important. So let's focus on this arrangement and ask ourselves what it means. Now, Obviously, if we have the numbers 4, 7, 9, 9 in the same column, it would be very clear that we could simply eliminate from any open cells the numbers 4, 7, and 9, and that would be very powerful. But there is still some value in this sort of bent triple arrangement where we have the subset 4, 7, and 9, but not all in the same column. And the way to work out what or how valuable it is is to compare this central cell of the Y-wing and to pick different values for it. So if we pick a 4, you can see this square will be a 9. If we pick a 7, this square will be a 9. So this is powerful because now we know that if we can find any cell in the grid that can see both this square and this square, then we can remove 9 as a possibility from that square. So the most obvious squares obviously are going to be these three squares here. These three squares here cannot contain a 9. Now immediately we could see that we would have known that already because of this 9 here and this 9 here in respect of this cell and this cell. So it's this cell that I suspect will be the most interesting. So, um, so we need to work hard on the possibilities for this square and see what they're limited to. So let's have a look at the row. We've got uh, 1, 6, 7, 8 and 9 to place. Well, you can see the 7 and the 9. 7 is ruled out by this 7 and the 9 is ruled out by the Y-wing. So we're left with 1, 6 and 8 as the possibilities, I think. So let's look at, let's just check whether or not we can, yes, we can eliminate a 1 because of this one here and this one here. They interact on this 3x3 three three block to force a 1 into one of those two positions. So this square cannot contain a 1. So now we've managed to limit this to a 6 or an 8. Now can we do anything more than that? Mm -hmm. let's, let's start pencil marking these squares in more fully. So what are the options here? 2, 7 and 8. So this is a 7 or an 8. So again we're starting to get some serious restrictions on these squares. Um, I think we need to, what can this be? Let's have a look at uh, row number four here and just check what, what the options are. So two, six, seven, eight. So this is two, six or eight. Oh, that's six or seven, I think. Is that 6 or 7? That's important because that's another Y-wing. If it is, 2, 6, 7, 8, 2. Yes, it is. OK, so now you can see we've got exactly the same arrangement that we had before when we looked at a bent triple. We've got another bent triple, but this time this square, this square and this square form a bent triple on the number 6, 7 and 8. And look at that. It's beautiful because now let's take the pivot cell of the Y-wing say so what happens if this is a 6? Well if this is a 6, this square here will be a 7. If this on the other hand is an 8, this square here will be a 7. So we know that any cell in this grid that can see this square and this square cannot contain a 7. And we've already done all the work earlier to identify that this, this square here is a double on the number 7 and 9. So this cannot contain a 7 anymore and therefore it's forced to be a 9. Now I really hope that's going to be important. Um, let's have a look. This seven here means there's a so this has to be a seven now. Now now that we know there's a seven in one of these three squares, where can we place a seven in this three by three block? Only in this position. So that's a seven. Oops, seven. That pencil mark can be erased. We've got two four pair now here and we have to place the numbers 4 and 9 into these two squares. So now 4 is forced into this square. Let's put that in. 
and we know that one of these, this will be a 2-7 pair. 4-4, four, four, we've got a place of 4 here, and this may be the final, uh, this may have been the critical step to actually cracking this puzzle. I can, you know, it's starting to flow much more uh, quickly than it was before. You can see now, again, we've got 2-7 as the pairs here. So, I mean, I think the puzzle is done, isn't it? Because you can see that if we look at the 7s here, 7 here, there's going to have to be a 7 in one of these two positions. It's going to have to be a 2 in one of these two positions. And this 2 here unwinds that. It's going to give us a 1 here, etc. So I, I think that the rest of it is just going to be a, a, a manual task. Nothing clever, but... Um, but quite an interesting um, sort of end game there. Two, two Y-wings with one Y-wing leading into the second Y-wing. And that was certainly a nice spot. So I hope you enjoyed this, this solve. Um, please subscribe if you enjoy the content. We do appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.